Hello everyone, Siren here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my various roles at Amnesia over the past five years. I wanted to start off today by sharing a real pinch me moment with you, something that I still find surreal even today. And that was the first time I went to Amnesia back in 2015. I remember feeling really anxious about going. I'd never been to a super club on the island before. And I remember arriving into the main room, which was the drum and bass room at the time, and the terrace was defected. And I was looking up at the booth, Chase and Status were playing, and I just remember all the energy at the time in the room and really thinking, wow, first of all, I just want to be behind the DJs, and then thinking, one day I want to play there. And fast forward to 2019, and there I am, playing in the main room, after DJs that I'd followed and loved for years and it really just now even is crazy that that happened but I'm so grateful and perhaps this will inspire somebody else to follow their dreams. As I mentioned in a previous video, my journey with Amnesia started as part of the PR team selling tickets and guest list for the nights uh, and I then went on to secure the role as artist liaison. Working at Amnesia, you become part of a family. There's, it's a team. You feel a sense of something and you know that they'll always have your back. And especially Marty, the owner, and Chema, the manager, who I get on really well with, they've really supported me over the years and given me some amazing opportunities. I firmly believe that it was my time working as an artist liaison, how I conducted myself, presented myself, and dealt with situations that led me to make friendships and associations with industry people that gave me the opportunities I have now to start my career. On the night of a show as an artist liaison, there's a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. You're the front-facing person, the first port of call to meet the artist's needs, to make sure the night runs smoothly and also to deal with any problems. You have to be very conscious that you are being fair, that you are meeting the demands of the artist, not necessarily things that they're demanding of you directly, but of the booking agreement, and then hence the riders, and that's hospitality and technical. But you also have to be careful that you're not going to get taken advantage of, and that often comes from scenarios involving the people that artists bring with them, not necessarily art, the artists themselves. Having my first artist liaison experience at Amnesia was a bit like being thrown in at the deep end because when artists are playing at Amnesia, they're also on holiday. Uh, they're in Ibiza, they want to get a bit crazy, they're often bringing family and friends with them. So that's where as an artist liaison, you have to really be on the ball. It's not something you can do and go and get wasted or not pay attention. When people are drinking a little bit more and having a bit more fun, that's when they might be a bit late to get on stage, their friends might hold them back, there might be a bit of a kerfuffle here and there, too many people on stage, too many people backstage, extra guesses that you weren't expecting, asking for extra drinks, and you have to take control of the situation but not come across as somebody who's just being rude and bossy. Whilst I was working at Amnesia, doing the artist liaison role, it was, that was when I really knew that I wanted to do that myself. I wanted to be a DJ myself, I wanted to produce music, I wanted to be like the other DJs playing in the main room to a crowd of ravers that completely loved every second of it. Whenever I had an opportunity to, I would be stood behind the DJs in the booth, watching everything they were doing, trying to learn tips for myself and just really study their hands. And in the backstage, I would always sort of ask questions about production and what they were doing in their sets and actually it was in the back room and me asking questions that led to my first set there but I'll talk about that in another video. If I could give any advice to anyone who wanted to be an artist liaison because they wanted to do that role or as a route to DJing, I think I would just say learn how to handle yourself. Respect is earned in this industry and it's hard to earn and the drunk person who is being annoying is not gonna earn any respect. In the spirit of keeping things real, uh, a personal story of mine is that when I first was doing the PR role and managing to go backstage and meet the artist just before I took on the role of artist liaison, um, I probably had a few too many drinks most weeks. And then one week, actually, it was um, Andy C who said to me, you know, um, it's really nice to see you're a little bit less drunk this week. 
and the penny sort of dropped for me then that you need to be present, you need to have your working head screwed on. When I think of Ibiza, I think of amnesia. It's iconic and for me it's at the heart of my journey. That's where it started, that's where it continued, that's where I hope it continues. I'm just so grateful to everyone who was involved in it, whether it was people from Amnesia directly, from Together, from other DJs, all of that I'll expand further on in other videos. In the year 2018, I was the artist liaison and logistics manager at Ashwaya in Ibiza. When I was there working there, I dealt with artists from different genres, different backgrounds, from French Montana to David Guetta. And working there, really I had to up my game a lot. And confidentiality was key. There was a lot more expected of you. And I'm going to be talking about that in depth and how that then led to a role with Paul Van Dyke. And in the background, how I was learning to mix and DJ myself. Hit like if you enjoyed hearing more about my journey in this vlog and hit subscribe if you want to hear what happens next.